Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. So tomatoes are an absolute classic to grow in the backyard garden and today what we're going to do is we're going to plant out some tomatoes and we're going to plant them both in the ground and in some pots and we grow tomatoes here outside. Let's see what the best way of growing tomatoes outside is. So I kept a foot and a half of space near my garlic bed so I could plant things that I'm going to harvest regularly and now is the time for us to plant our tomatoes so this is a place where I'm going to plant my tomatoes and I've got a couple already planted and the way we're going to do this is we're going to take our tomato we're going to make a nice deep planting hole and you can see this how this soil has retained the moisture I mean where we've not had a decent rain since April and the soil has still retained the moisture really well because it's constantly mulched and that's one of the importance of, of mulch So it's really nice and wet under here as well. So that's quite good. So what I'm going to do is that once I've made my deep planting hole, I'm going to add some homemade compost. And I'm also going to add um, a handful of my bone ash and my wood ash that I showed you how to make in my bone, bone meal making video. So now I'm going to mix that in. You see how the bones just crumble down. So we ran out of plant pots and to keep growing, I grew in this old tin. And there we go. Nice healthy root ball. There's mainly two types of tomatoes. There's determinant and indeterminate. And determinant tomatoes are the bush type tomatoes. And you don't need to do anything with them you just put them in the ground you put them in your basket and just leave them be but with these indeterminate ones we're going to grow them as cordons and that's what i've got these stakes here for so i'm going to put a bit more compost in around the top of the plant i'm feeding it with a mixture of my homemade potash and some homemade compost and now that plants in the ground all these leaves that are real close to the ground What's going to happen is when you come in water, the water's going to splash up and it's going to, the dirt's going to hit these leaves and these leaves are going to uh, become diseased. So what I'm going to do is anything that the water's got at risk of water splash, I'm just going to snip off just like that. And that can all go in the compost bin. Now I'll just pull the mulch back over the top and I'll cover those, tom cover those tomatoes up. So tomatoes don't want to be planted out until the soil temperature is about 10 degrees Celsius as a minimum and they can really sulk quite badly if they come out before that. So wait for the soil to warm up properly before you plant them out. Now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to prune some of the tomatoes that I've already got in the ground. I'm going to take off the leaves. Very little examples of suckers. So I'm going to remove these. See that's where a leaf joint would have been and that comes out. And that's what your fruit, uh, f your flower set looks like. And that's what's going to be fruiting. And then we have one tiny tomato already set. So tomatoes will ripen uh, uh, when the temperature is at a steady 20 degrees Celsius. And that's about 68, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So when it's constantly, when the air temperature is constantly around that, then your tomatoes are going to be ripening. Now, we've got a little bit longer to wait for the fruits to set and us to have a constant temperature of that, that kind of rate. Um, but we're having a decent run this May, so let's let's keep planting. Uh, inshallah, let's see let's see what happens. Now I'm going to continue planting this row, but I'm also going to plant a few tomatoes in buckets, and I'll show you how you can plant tomatoes in pots, and you can push your harvest, and you can shelter your tomatoes a little bit longer. So I'm digging down quite deep, and you can see how far my garlic and my onion roots are going. They're supposed to be quite a shallow plant, but because the soil and this moisture, do you know the way the moisture is in this water? I'm really quite happy with that. I'm, it's something that's quite pleasing for me to see. So there's another sucker there. I'm going to just take that out and get this tomato in. So I initially planted this in a small pot 
and then when it grew to about this sort of height I put it into this bottle and this is a soda uh, a drinks bottle and with normal plant pots they're quite shallow the small ones and to get a taller plant pot you've got to get quite a wide one and they don't need the width when you're growing them and you're starting them off they need the height because tomatoes like to be planted deep and that's what that's what you've seen me doing if you can see the length of this I'm going to bury at least half of this plant under the ground so I've got my compost in I've got my bone meal in and there we go I'm just going to bury it back so if you see the original soil level and once I put the mulch back on top for the height of the plant look how much has gone under the ground now and the important thing with tomatoes as well is to stake them straight away because when you stake them when they're quite young like this then you're not disturbing their roots but when you stake a mature plant and you will need to mature stake these because we're growing them as cordons we're going to grow them as single stem tomatoes because they're easier to manage they're better for disease control so what we're going to do is we're going to stake them straight away so we don't damage those roots so tomatoes are really good for planting in buckets as well and the way you've seen me plant with a lot of my stuff is I always start off with a layer of wood chips. So now what I'm going to do is after I put in a layer of wood chips is put my homemade compost. I'm going to start putting my homemade compost in. So I'm going to take my tomato. And you can see the root ball again. How nice that is. And I'm going to plant it again really deep. I'm going to add a handful of this bone meal. Just fill it up with lots and lots of compost so if you're going to plant in a bucket or a plant pot you want to give it at least a 10 litre pot so it has plenty of space to spread its roots and spread and, and grow the other advantage of growing them in pots is that you can move these pots to a sheltered position so you can put it next to a wall uh, a brick wall that wall will radiate heat all night for for the tomatoes Yes, thank you. This one. Good man, thank you. So I'm going to stake this in straight away. I'm using these bamboo canes to give it the support. For the type of thing that I'm doing, these bamboo canes are perfectly fine. They're adequate for me. I'm not going to grow the super duper greenhouse varieties for commercial growers up to 10 feet tall. It's just not going to happen. For me, I maximum I grow is to five trusses, typically four to five trusses. And again, I'm just going to use my soft tie to tie it in. I mean, the cloth. It's just from an old sari, so it's a cotton sari. And that's all we use. It's a nice soft tie. It, and when we're done with it, we can compost it down. And that's going to be fine. I'm going to give it a good water in and make sure they settle the roots really nicely. Wood ash is extremely alkaline. So you've got to watch your soil pH. Because what can happen quite a bit is people will end up with things like blossom end rot and they'll say oh i haven't got enough calcium in the soil most soils are adequately full of calcium that we need for for our plants very few soils are that deficient especially if you're on clay clay is full of minerals now i add the trace elements because you're getting your calcium you're getting all your uh micro elements as well as some of your Phos you know your, your uh, macro elements like your phosphorus the tomato is like a ph of about 6 to 6.8 so fairly neutral to slightly very slightly acidic like most uh, nightshade family potatoes they like a slightly even a slightly lower pH and the reason that pH is important is because the wrong pH could mean that the plant will um, not take up the right amount of nutrients so what I was saying about the calcium is if the pH is off then the plant will, won't suck up the calcium from the soil and then it'll look like it's calcium deficient. People add more calcium thinking that that's what the problem is, but they won't get solve the problem because the pH is off. So do check your pH and try and control your pH because that's something that's really important. And that's one of the advantages, that's one of the uses of wood ash and the use of horse manure. You can, you can use those kind of things to regulate your pH and balance your pH. Now here's another tomato plant and here's a good demonstration of a sucker. So just between the leaf joint, so these are the leaves, that's the main stem, and we're going to single stem these. And just between the leaf joint 
and the main main stem you get this little branch that grows out of the what I like to call the armpit and this is what's called a sucker and the reason that it's called a sucker is it drains energy from the plant to this separate part of the plant so I'm just going to pinch that sucker out and these are tiny little suckers here I'm going to take those out as well now on their own those suckers would grow into an old, their own section of a plant on attached to the main plant itself and you'd end up with this massive jungly mess it draw energy away from the main plant the main plant won't produce as well because it's feeding these suckers and these suckers will put out lots and lots of little flowers and they'll never quite be right that's why I like to single stem them because they're easier to control sometimes what can happen you can end up with a plant that's quite leggy like this one it's quite thick so I'm not quite, I'm not very worried about it if you've got a leggy plant like this and you don't have the room to be able to dig down to about a foot deep to get this plant planted one of the things that you can do is you can plant it on its side and I'll show you how to do that so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all the suckers so I'm going to take that sucker off there I'm going to take that sucker off there and I'm going to remove any leaves that are going to be low down so I've got a nice clean stem so again I'm going to peel back the mulch that I'm working on and this time instead of digging a deep hole I'm going to dig a wide trench So it's going, to be, it's going to be longer rather than deeper. Now I've got my trench. I'm going to take my tomato plant. And with this one, it's a nice specimen. If I'd have planted it to about that deep, it would have been lovely actually. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant it on its side. So I'm going to play, lay the roots just like that. And all of these little hairs on the smarter plant, all of these are going to become more roots. I'm going to cover it in compost. So lots and lots of compost all the way. Get that plant covered. Get that soil over the top. Get that mulch back over. And that's it. That's another way of planting. Yeah. If you can't go deep, go wide with the tomato. Carry on planting out the rest of my tomatoes. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like for me and share this video out. I'll leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.